The following is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Dad, how yeah. do games consoles work? Um, I don't really know. Well, Dad, how do you write your own games? Uh, I don't know that either. Wait, so do you know anything? Well, I think I know someone who can help us find out how to make our own consoles and how to write our own games. Hi, we're the Micromonsters. The team at Element 14 heard we had some questions about game consoles and how to write computer games. So they sent us a product to review that they say should answer a lot of those. So let's unbox. Da, da, da. Oh, here is the knife. Very now, nice. you need to unbox with a knife, obviously, but you need to teach the youngest member of your team how to do it safely. So that's what we've done already. So carefully about and safely. About 50 times. About 50 times, let's get it. Well done, okay. So, let's have a look. What's inside? Game console! So this is the GameZip 64. You see that on the back there. Made by Kitronix. And this looks like a really cool like, make your own console mm -hmm. thing. So, okay. it's got a slot at the top here, which you plug in our favourite computer, the BBC Micro bit. You see it plugs in just kind of like uh, a cartridge does in a DS or yeah, in a yeah. Game Boy. So you can see on the front here we've got some pretty standard features. It's got a button, and these you can see they're kind of soldered onto a circuit board. They are just normal buttons, got left, right, up and down. We've got a big screen here, so bigger than the built-in one on the micro bit. But these LEDs look like they're multicoloured LEDs, it should be mm -hmm. quite fun. And then we've got a few things on the front. We've got a buzzer there to make some sound, and underneath it we've got this little kind of silver thing. What do you think that is? Um, uh, sound? I think it's probably a motor, so it kind of gives us some forced feedback. It rumbles when you kind of crash into things, so you can program it in your game. On the back, as well as telling you what it is and everything, it's got three battery connectors so we can power it. And just on the top here, there's a tiny little switch for the battery connector. So we're going to show you how to use this. We're going to play some of the games on it. Uh, and then we're going to show you how you can kind of make it your own console, decorate it. And let's go and get on with that. Yeah, let's get started. So we've downloaded one of the games, the first one, haven't we? Do you want to show us what the first game we downloaded? The first game is Ping Pong. It's two players. So we just turn it on with a switch, do we? Mm -hmm. Okay, turn it on. So this is to go up, this is to go down, that's to go down, that's to go up okay. for red team. And it's saying the name of the game across the micro bit, isn't it? Bit bold. So you can see we've got different <coughs> colours on this display. <coughs> Your team blue and team red. <coughs> What's that noise, Tash? What it's happened? the buzzer. <coughs> so when it, hits, <coughs> when it hits our paddle, <coughs> it's using <coughs> that buzzer, is it? <coughs> yeah. And if I miss it... Blue wins! Blue wins! Give me five! Cool! That's the first game. This is the next game. Um, this game is Snake. Um, but first I'll just show you that there are three batteries on the back. Um, and then, so as before, you turn it on with the still switch. And it'll come up saying Snake at the very top. And then it will show that this green light is your snake and the red light is the food. So like before you move using these two, uh, like you can move like this, you don't really need to use this side at all. Um, and you just keep eating and the um, there's not any more colours apart from this. But you just keep eating and then if you run into yourself and it buzzes like that and says game over. So we've 3D printed some food pieces for this case uh, and it came from the Kitronix uh, website where you can download these. Uh, so here we've kind of printed the front uh, and actually it prints with these little tiny holes uh, for the screen. And so the little LEDs on here line up with the holes. So that goes on the front uh, and then you can print a kind of grip for the back of the case so your hands can kind of grip around it and room for the battery. Uh, so we've got one each and a kind of pink one and a blue one. And basically this just clips on over the top like that, come through little holes on either side of the case. 
And then these should, I'm not sure which way round, those go over the grips like that and then push down and then you kind of have your console. So we're gonna decorate those um, however we like. Uh, obviously you can't decorate this panel here in the middle because that's where the lights turn on. If we turn this on here, you'll see. So we can't decorate that, but we can decorate all the way on the colors and over there, stick whatever we like on. So we're gonna do that. Here's a tiny laptop, so this is like electric, sort of. And here's headphones, and I did some dotting, and then I drew a monster. And then I did some colouring there, but it's, it faded already. And then, I think it's really cool, I did some stickers to show you what colour you are. Um, I've literally just got polka dots and s stuff all over it, and then I haven't drawn anywhere on this little area because that's where the um, lights will come up when you play the game. So here's a game we've written previously but we've adapted for the game Zip64. I'm going to show you how it works and then we'll quickly go and show you some of the code that we've adapted to work with all the features of the game Zip64. You ready, steady, go! Oh. So you can see we fire missiles across from the little blue dot at the bottom of the screen. As they go off our screen, they come onto your second player's screen. And you can see the score is kept on the micro bit at the top there while you're doing it. If the missile hits you, it shakes you with the little motor on the Zip 64's board. And obviously it makes a noise. So one all. Final death, who's the next one? Yay! Right, let's show you how we coded that. So this is the code for our two-player game. It's written in Make Code, which is the editor from Microsoft. We'll share a link for that. It's a little bit complicated, so I'm just going to kind of run over some of the things that we've done with the game Zip64. So you'll see at top here, I've got a library already loaded specifically for the game Zip64, but you can add that just by clicking Add Package, search for Zip, and there it is. Click on it, and it will load straight in. So that gives us a few little extra blocks. We've got blocks for specific things on the display. We've got some feedback blocks and we've got some inputs and things. But you can see here, if I zoom in, what we do when we start here is we set up the display. So it's a zip, zip, zip 64 8x8 display. We set up a few little variables to keep track of um, the player and the missiles on each screen. Um, we set the pitch pin, which is one of these things in here, so that it will actually make the buzzer make a noise. So that's kind of setting up things. We've got two what are called events. So one for when you click the left joypad, and one for when you click the right joypad, and it moves the player left and right, like you can see there. And at the end of all of these functions, it's calling draw screen. So draw screen, rather than having to draw individual things for the player and for the missiles and things like that, we've got it all in one function over here. And we can call this function wherever we like. And you can see it sets the main display to not be super, super bright because the LEDs are crazily bright. So set it down a little bit. It clears it each time and then it redraws where the player is, where the missile is, where the opponent's missile is. So every single time that gets called, it will redraw the screen. Then we've got a little bit of the bottom here that's just looping forever, waiting for someone to press the fire button, and then it fires the missile. And you'll see here it calls the radio on the micro bits. So that's sending a message to the other micro bit saying, the missile's just left my screen, um, and can you display it on yours? And then the other half of that is this bit here that says on radio received. So that is checking that it's come through, checking that it's a missile coming through. If it does, it draws the missile. And then as it's drawing the missile moving down the screen, it checks whether it's hit the player and if it has it sends a message to the other player saying they're a winner um, it runs the motor and buzzes in their hand to know they've been hit it plays a kind of sad trombone wah 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 noise to say that you've been hit and changes the scores so we'll include a link to this so you can have a look in detail but you can see the game zip 64 has got all the features on the board the buzzer the um, the little vibrating motor the buttons all in this library making it really easy to code in in this micro bit editor so thanks for watching our review of the game Zip64. Thank you for Element14 for sending it across. Um, so we had a really good fun. We had some good laughs playing with it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, what was your favourite thing? My favourite thing was playing the second game. Playing the game we wrote, the yeah. multiplayer one. And you? Um, my favourite bit was probably that you can customise it. You can choose what game you play, um, and then you can obviously customise it in like drawing on it or sticking stickers on it. 
So what would your score out of 10 be? What would you give it? Well, if I could do it higher, it would probably be 100. But You'd give it 100? Yeah, but out of 10, 10. So 10 out of 10. Yeah. What about you? 9.5. 9.5, I can't. 9.5, kind of like that. I never say anything's 10. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Let us know any questions or comments you've got. Otherwise, we'll see you again. Bye.